All right, in this lecture, we are gonna be learning about how to work with databases. And we're gonna work with a particular type of database called an SQLite database. So if you haven't heard of SQL before, it stands for Server Querying Language. Uh, it's a basic way to store some data inside of something called a database and then access that information and edit it, change it, delete it whatever you need to do. And you might be wondering, I don't even know what a database is. Well, just think of a database as a place to store large amounts of information. When, when you think about databases at their very biggest, think about a company like Facebook or Twitter where they have to store millions and millions of Facebook posts or millions and millions of tweets. Um, I mean, maybe that even gets up into the billions, but uh, you know, it has to store all this information in something called a database. And the awesome thing about databases is they're really good about handling large amounts of information like that. So our shared preferences that we've been working with before, for example, if we wanted to store, uh, let's say, for example, we were making an app that was going to catalog uh, all of our music. So, uh, you know, music that has a bunch of artists and those artists have albums and those albums have songs and stuff like if we had 40,000 songs that we wanted to list inside of a string array uh, that would go terribly if we try to save that into shared preferences it'd take a long time to save but with a database that's built to handle something like that it could go much much faster and process that uh, in a much better way for the user so what I want to teach you is how to work with an SQL database and then through this you'll see how you can store information and ultimately the more robust of an application you want you're going to want to tend to side more with SQL uh, databases versus you know if it's kind of a smaller task shared preferences might work but I want to show you a little bit more of what the heavy duty world is like. So let's go ahead and create a new Android Studio project. I think we can just go ahead and call this database demo and uh, we'll just use defaults for everything here. We're not gonna do anything visual. This is gonna be all via code. Um, but basically the main thing that I wanna get across to you here is that I think the best way to think about a database is to think of it as uh, an Excel spreadsheet uh, or a Google Sheet if you don't have, uh, if you've never used Microsoft Excel before. But uh, basically a SQL database consists of something called well, first the database, and I would think of that if, if you have like a spreadsheet file like this, the whole file, this is called the database. And in this database, you can have multiple tables. So for example, here you can see one table, and maybe I'm, you know, for example, uh, in our example, we're gonna make a database that holds users. So I would call this the users database, okay? So with this database, let's say I want to store some information about users, like I wanna know what their name is, and I also want to know what their age is. So these are like two pieces of information that I want to store about a particular user. And then as you know, I get more and more users, I would add something, I would insert something into this table. So I would say, okay, there's someone named Nick, and he's 28 years old. And then there's someone named Sarah, and she is 35 years old. There's someone named Jane, she is six years old. Uh, and there's someone named uh, Rob, there we go, and he is 14 years old. And you can kind of just go like this and you are adding people to your table here called users. So really a database at the end of the day sort of represents the same thing that this sheet does. So we're gonna come back and reference this, but I just want you to have this idea in your mind. So let's go ahead and open up Android Studio. We're just gonna do everything here in OnCreate, and like I said, I'm just gonna show you how to get a, table, a database set up, and we're not gonna do any visual stuff, we're just gonna log out some information. So step one for us to create an SQL Lite database, and I, I will mention, if you wanna know about more about SQL and how databases work, please go Google it, there's tons of information, but hopefully I've got enough for you here to get off the ground. So, uh, first thing that we're gonna create is an SQL Lite database. So capital SQLite database, and we'll just go ahead and call this my database. There's nothing special about that name, it's just the name that I created. And we're gonna say this is equal to this dot open or create database. So the cool thing about this is when you want to create a new database, uh, you can give it a name and by using this open or create, it's saying, hey, if there's already an existing one, well, then I'll go ahead and just open that, but if it's, there's not one, then I'll go ahead and create it. So this is kind of a cool function there. So we have to give a name for our database, which if we think about uh, our 
spreadsheet example, that would be like naming this file. And so if we come back to our example here, I would maybe call this capital users like that, but all the lowercase there. Uh, so that's typically what you do with the name of the database is you give the first letter the capital and everything else lowercase. Then uh, we have to set what kind of mode that we want this in. And so just like we did with shared preferences, let's do mode private that says only this app can access this. You know, you could do something else if you want to let other apps access it, but most of the time you want mode private. And then lastly, uh, there's some special things you can do with exceptions, but we're just going to put null for this. Uh, we're, we just want to go ahead and roll the default way. So this is first line of code. This creates a new database for us, or if that database already exists, it will open it back up for us. And then once we have a database, we need to create a table. So again, if we open up a new file, uh, we would have to create a new table for, exist, for example here, maybe called users. So if we come back to Android Studio here, uh, we need to now take my database and we're going to do dot exec SQL. And this is short for execute SQL. And again, SQL is this whole separate language from like Java. It's a way to interact with databases. And so we're going to put some information into a string and the code that we put in there is SQL. And again, if you want to learn more SQL, you can definitely Google it. But this is the code that we write in order to like make tables, insert things in there, and you, you'll see as we go. So typically SQL is in all capitals except for when you're working with the names of like databases and variables, uh, table names, stuff like that. So we're gonna type out, just follow me here for a second, all caps create space table space if not exists and then we're going to go lowercase users and then we're going to do in parentheses here we're going to say lowercase name space var capital varchar comma age space capital int then we're going to do parentheses put the number three inside of there and that's it okay so this is what we're creating and essentially this is what this line of sql code says it says create table if not exists. Now the grammar on this isn't excellent, but it's pretty close to English here. And we're saying make a new table in this database uh, if it doesn't exist. Now, if it does exist, then it will just skip this line of code. But it's saying as long as this doesn't exist, create a new table called users. And it's typically okay to call the name of one of your tables the same thing as your, um, your database. That's usually fine. So we're saying create a new table as long as it doesn't exist called users. And then within that, we want to have two properties of a user, right? We want to know the user's name and their age, right? So if we go back to our example here uh, in numbers, uh, so we made a new table called users and we said we want to know somebody's name and their age. Now with a database, you have to be specific uh, that you say, okay, name are going to be something called a varchar. And a varchar, just think of that as a string. Char is short for characters and it's saying it's a collection of characters. So name is a varchar, aka a string, and then age is an int. And the number that we pass in the parentheses is that's how many digits you want to go to. So I can't imagine someone being older than 999 years old. So that's why I kept that as three. But, you know, you, we could make this four, ten, whatever it is that we want to be. But in this case, I think we're OK with three. Um, so, yeah, that's all that this line of code says. It says make a new table called users and we're going to have name and age where name is a string and age uh, represents an int. OK. So after that line of code, the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to put some information into this table. So that would be the equivalent of going to our spreadsheet here and saying, you know, Nick and putting in 50 or something. I guess so we already have Nick up there. Let's change this to a Rick, for example. So uh, maybe let's just do this top one, right? Let's just add Nick with an age of 28. So if we come back to our code here, Again, we're going to do my database.execute SQL. This is the, how you connect with the database. So it's looking for a string. And in this one, we're going to say in all caps, insert into, and we're trying to insert something into our table, which is called users here. So we'll do lowercase users. So insert into users. And what we're trying to insert is in both a name and an age. So we put those both in parentheses, comma, separating the two. And then we say what values are going to be connected with those. So we're going to say the values of 
And then let's go ahead and put in parentheses. Uh, first, we're going to put the name that we want to put through. Go ahead and put uh, whenever you're using a string or I guess technically a varchar here uh, in SQL, you use single quotes. So I'm going to put, for example, Nick right in there. And then I'm going to say comma and then put in an age like 28. OK, so let's walk through what we did. We said insert into users. We want to add something into the users table uh, and we want to add a name and an age. And we're saying, OK, for name and the age, here's the values. So what's name going to be equal to? Name's going to be equal to Nick. What's age going to be equal to? Age is equal to 28. OK, and you'll notice for the name, we had to put the single quote around it. That's how uh, we represent that. And then for age, we just did a straight up number. So that is the exact same thing as going to here and saying, OK, I'm going to add in insert Nick and he has an age of 28. I've inserted a row into this table. OK, so to make sure you're comprehending what's going on, uh, I want you to add one more person into your database. It may be yourself. If you already put your own name and age in there, go ahead and pick someone else, but add someone to your database now. All right, hopefully that went well for you. Uh, it's going to be very similar to what we have up top, so I'm just going to copy and paste this. I'm going to say insert into users, a name and an age, but instead of Nick and 28, maybe I'll do Sean, who is, uh, let's do 33. Okay, so now I have two people that are going to go inside of my database. Now, this is how you add people to a database. The question then becomes, how do you pull people out of a database? Like, how do you get someone's information? Well, uh, you use something called a cursor. So go ahead and just start typing out cursor, hit enter to make sure you get the proper imports there. But we'll say cursor C is equal, and that's usually what people call a cursor is C. Uh, let cursor C be equal to my capital database dot raw query. And a query is whenever you're pulling something out of the database. Uh, here we're like creating new tables, inserting things in a query is when you're taking something back out. So a raw query, and we're going to have to provide a string with this. And the string that we want to provide is we're going to say, we just want to say, give us every single thing that's inside of the user's table. Uh, it'd be the same thing as saying, give us everything that's listed down here. So if we had maybe just to keep things consistent, right? Sean33, we're saying, give us both these lines. And if there were more lines, it'd say, give me those. But uh, so we're going to say here, all caps, select star capital from, and then we're going to give the name of the table, which is lowercase users. And the select star from is it saying select everything. The star represents everything. So we're saying select everything from the table users. All right. Once you've provided the SQL query, uh, we have to provide one more parameter. And uh, in this case, there's some special things you can provide when you're doing a query, but we're just going to go ahead and put null there. So we'll just do that. Okay. So with all of that in place, the next thing that we want to do is if we want to access the name and age, we're going to have to get the indexes for those. And you might not know what an index is now, but just walk with me for a second here. I'm going to say index or int name index is equal to C dot get and we want get column index and we're going to pass in the name of one of the columns. So we're going to say name. And if you're wondering what a column is inside of a table, uh, so this would be considered a column. This is the name column. This is the age column. So that's what it's going for here. So let's come back to our code. So we're saying we have a name index that says get us the column index for name. And then we're going to say int age index is going to be equal to c dot get column index for age, just like that. All right. So with these two pieces of information in place. Uh, we have to take our cursor and uh, get it to the starting position. So we're going to say C dot move to first. And essentially what this does is we're saying, hey, move our cursor uh, to the starting position, which if we were looking at this here, it would get us to Nick. So it's sort of saying, hey, start right here, ready to process this first row of code. Then, you know, it can eventually move on to all the items. So we're going to come back to Android Studio here. And once we're at the first position, we want to loop through each row inside of the table, right? We want to go to here, to here, to here, to here. So we're going to set up a while loop in order to do that. So we're going to say while C is not equal to null, 
then we want to go ahead and do the following information. So if there is nothing inside of the database, C will be equal to null and it won't run this code. But if we say C move to first and there is something there, then C is going to have the information for that first item. So to get that information, we're going to do a log. We're going to say log.i and we'll say this first is going to represent the name. And then to get the actual name information, we're going to say C dot get string and we need to provide it you can see an int and we're going to provide it one of the name index to say that we want to get to the name so we're going to go ahead and provide name index there and that's going to get the string of whatever that person's name is and then it's after we're done with this we're going to go ahead and loop on to the next one so we're going to say c dot move to next and that will go on to the next item. And once it runs out of items, uh, C will eventually become null, right? Which at that point, it will do that. Uh, but what I want you to do is I want you to add the proper code to log out the age in addition to the name. So go ahead, do it on your own. Make sure you can log out the age as well as the name. Hit pause now. Okay, hopefully that went well for you. Uh, it's almost the same thing as this except we just want to know about the age, so we've got to update this with age index, okay? Uh, so with this information in place, you are ready to go ahead and give this a try. So let's go ahead and run this on our emulator. So we should see what happens, is that when we run this, uh, it's gonna come through and say, hey, open or create a database. Well, we haven't created any databases before, so it's gonna create this new database called users. Then it's gonna say, hey, if this table doesn't exist, create this new table called users. And because it doesn't exist, it will create one, and it's gonna have a column for names and a column for ages. Then we're gonna add two people into that database. So we're gonna add one person named Nick, who's 28, and one person named Sean, who's 33. Then, once we've added those two people to the table inside of the database, we are going to do a query where we say, hey, go give us every single person inside of the users table. Then uh, we're going to get the name index and the age index so we can get the proper information from this query. But then we're going to get our cursor, move to the very first one, and then we're going to do this while loop that says, okay, print out the name and the age uh, for the current place that the cursor is at. And then we're going to say c.move to next. And the c.move to next essentially is doing this. It's, you know, if we've started here and we're looking at this row, when I say c.move to next, whoosh, it moves down to the next row and whoosh, moves down to the next, to the next, to the next. Uh, so, you know, if there was a bunch of information, like if we had this repeated a bunch of times, right, it would move down. And once it goes, you know, it's on this line and it moves to the next and there's nothing, well, that's when c would be equal to null, which then means uh, we would, you know, this while loop would stop. So let's go ahead and open up logcat, see what information we got. And let's go ahead and scroll to the top and look at that. We have it printed out Nick, 28, Sean, 33. Now, if we wanted to run this one more time, it would come through. It wouldn't recreate the database because it's already there. It wouldn't recreate the table because it's already there. But it would add in the same users. So in fact, if we hit run here one more time, we're going to see the number of users jump from 2 to four. So let's go ahead and look at logcat here. And look at that, the exact thing happens. So we have Nick 28, Sean 33, Nick 28, Sean 33. So if we want to make it so we don't add any more people, we just comment out these two lines of code and say, look, uh, we don't need to do that anymore. And now if we run the app one more time, all right, we'll give this a second to come around here. Look at that, it says Nick, Sean, Nick, Sean. So it only had the four people because we essentially said, hey, quit adding people to this. We just want to pull people out of it. Now to confirm and make sure that you've really got a good grasp on this, I have a challenge for you. So what I want you to do is to, you can go back and reference uh, the previous video to see some of this code to make sure you're doing things correctly. But what I want you to do is I want you to create a new database and a new table that represents some events. So an event table is going to have the name of the event. It's also going to have the year in which that event happened. So I'm kind of thinking like big world changing event type of thing. So uh, 
go ahead and recreate a completely new database and table where it's dealing with events. Again, an event is going to have a name and then also a year in which that event happened. Okay, so go ahead, hit pause, do that now. All right, so hopefully that went well for you. Uh, we're gonna cut this out so that we can start from scratch here. And if you've noticed, we've had a couple of uh, errors here with problems that are happening and I should have surrounded everything in a try catch to make this uh, code a little bit more elegant. So on this one, we'll go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna set up a try catch. Let's go catch all those exceptions and we'll print those out when we get them. All right, so with this try, uh, the first thing that we wanna do, just like before, is we're gonna get our database. Uh, in this one, I'll just call it lowercase SQLite database. And this is gonna be equal to this dot open or create database. And this time I'm gonna call it capital events. And I want this to be mode private and we don't need any special exception stuff. So we'll just leave that null. Next thing that we've gotta do is we've got to set up the table. So we're gonna take uh, SQLite database dot execute some SQL on that. And we're gonna say in all caps, create table if not exists and we want that to be lowercase events and then we'll go and say in parentheses uh, an event should have a name which we should have represented by a varchar aka a string right and then we also want to have a year that we should be represented by an int and we should have this int be at least four digits long right because a year 19 55, uh, 1947, whatever it is, you wanna be able to do the four numbers there, okay? So that creates our table. Next, we want to insert some data inside of there. So again, SQLite database, dot, let's execute some SQL. So we're gonna say capital insert, and we wanna do into events, and we're gonna say, we're gonna provide a name and a year. That's just the name of those two properties, right? And then the values for those properties are going to be, uh, so let's go ahead and let's, we should correct this insert, there we go. Uh, so what's the name of some famous event? Well, I guess there was the, the millennium, which millennium, I don't think I spelled that correctly, but that was the year 2000, right? Uh, although I guess technically it was 2001 because the way the calendar worked, who knows one, but everybody went crazy in the year 2000 for the millennium, okay? So that's one thing that we've got there. Let's go ahead and go ahead and add another life event. Um, so this one was so monumental, Nick started teaching. <laughs> So that happened back in 2014. To me, that's kind of a personal one, like, oh yeah, that was a cool time. Um, and I've loved it ever since. Uh, but, so, um, sorry, getting cheesy on you here, but we've added, we've created this events table, we've added some information into it. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is create our cursor. So we'll make our cursor C, that should be equal to our SQLite database dot raw query. And this is where we'll say select star from the events, just like that. We also want to provide a null there because we don't need any special stuff. Then with this cursor, we got to get the event index and the year index. So we'll say int event index is going to be equal to c dot get column index for or I don't want this to be event index, I want it to be name index. So we'll do that for name. And we'll do the same thing, but we wanna copy it for year. So we'll call that year index and change that to be year. All right, so with all of that in place, we're ready to say c.move to first to get up to the first position. Then we'll do our while loop here, okay? And uh, we'll say as long as C is not equal to null, then we want to log out some information. So we're gonna say log.i, and with this, we'll say results for the event, 
is going to be equal to c dot get string uh, for the event. Uh, sorry, the name index. There we go. And we want to do something similar for the results. Um, and that should be results name, not event, and then results year. And then on this, on this one, um, I guess last time I did things a little bit improperly. So if we're going to grab an int from the database, we should probably, instead of doing get string, we should do dot get int. And we'll provide the year index there. And then since we're going to be logging this, we have to say, okay, capital integer dot to string. And then we can go ahead and surround that there and then put our semicolon on all that. Uh, there we go. Oh, and this got rid of C dot get int. There we go. Okay, so that should properly do all that. And we got to make sure at the while loop that we say C dot move to next. So if, uh, if we don't have this move to, not first, move to next, it's just going to keep looping and looping through that very first one. That would be bad news for our situation here. So let's go ahead and run, run this as kind of our moment of truce. And to kind of just sort of confirm what's going on here, right? If we followed this example in the spreadsheet, it'd be like renaming this file to be the name of events. And then we would name this table to be events. Okay, and it's not letting me do a lowercase there, but the name of the table should be lowercase. Then the name of these properties, we still want to keep name, but this one is going to be year. Again, those should be lowercase, but that's fine. And it's like uh, if we came and said, okay, the millennium was in the year 2000. Ooh, it even pulled over the green text. That was kind of cool. Uh, and then if we come back to the code, we copy Nick started teaching. Boom. And we put in 2014 there. Make sure I have 2000. All right, so that's essentially what's happening here, right? So I just kind of do this example because I know databases can be a little bit of a foreign topic. But let's go ahead and open up Logcat, see what we got here. And if we open it up, look at that. It says Millennium 2000, Nick started teaching 2014. And uh, also the error that we were getting before was now appropriately handled with this exception. So pretty cool stuff there. All right. Uh, now that we've got that, uh, let's go ahead. We still have some more details to learn about how to work with the database, but you know, in the short little lecture, you've had a proper introduction. You've created two databases now, and you know, you've got a little bit more knowledge about how tables and insertion works. Uh, you're looking great. So let's keep moving forward.